Applications of A2L Refrigerants. That's the topic for this episode of Checkup with Dr. Chuck. Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for this episode. Uh, today is another part, part two in my mini-series, Anatomy of A2L Refrigerants. So if you hadn't caught the first episode where I talked about burning velocity, really gave a behind the scenes look about how A2L uh, refrigerants are uh, classified and some of the measurements we make looking at their flammability properties, I encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, also in the mini series, we'll be covering some information around codes and standards. That's very important to the use of A2Ls and applications, as well as some real practical uh, safety and handling and service instructions for using A2Ls that we're gonna have to come up to speed with here as the industry transitions to A2Ls. Um, but for today, I wanna focus on the applications and starting off, um, Going back to the ASHRAE uh, standard 34 definition. So we're really focusing in here on the two L's. So the lower flammability refrigerants, they're not uh, non-flammable. They're not the uh, no flame propagation category. They're not class one, but they're not class three, you know, where we have uh, the hydrocarbons, butane, propane, and the uh, highly explosive flammable refrigerant. So it's uh, used to be called mildly flammable. We're trying to get away from that language a little bit but the lower flammability refrigerants is where we want to focus. So in terms of the applications of A2Ls, really uh, depends on the equipment and the systems and the spaces and the places uh, where we're going to see A2Ls and where we have seen some A2Ls being adopted already. So that's the how, what, and where or they'll be showed up. It's all based on these risk analysis, safety standards, and building codes coming in. So we know a flammable refrigerants have been around for a while. Uh, we've had protein, propane, butane, uh, the class three in small charge size of self-contained stuff. And we're starting to see some A2Ls and things like automotive and some small uh, packaged uh, AC units. But where the big adoptions are gonna be coming is when we move into residential split systems like commercial and in commercial refrig, uh, the systems, the applications uh, where A2L flammables are going to be used and when uh, is something that we want to be aware of and so we know what's coming on down the line. So really the adoption, the applications of, of A2Ls is really based fundamentally on the safety uh, aspects of those refrigerants and being able to install them, service them, and design systems so that they can be safely used for their environmental properties and we can mitigate any hazards associated with the uh, flammability. So first and foremost, I want to just put this out there. It's probably obvious, but these flammable refrigerants are only going to be used in new equipment that was designed to mitigate the flammability. That is equipment that was designed where they could be used safely. And when I say designed, then installed and serviced as well. So we're not going to see A2Ls being put into standard traditional system that's already been installed at the field. That is, we're not going to retrofit a 410A air conditioner with an A2L refrigerant. Uh, it's pretty obvious, but it's a very important part uh, point to make. Finally, the, uh, the design of the new systems really is focused on a couple key uh, principles, I would say. One is leak detection and mitigation. So if there's a leak, we want to be able to detect it and in an active sense, not just sound an alarm, but uh, if a leak is detected, that there's some mitigation, whether it's turning on a fan or opening some ventilation or other things that will keep it operating safely and avoid us reaching uh, the lower flammability limit. You can't have any flammable fire issues if you never get to the lower flammability limit. So the detection mitigation is key to keeping us below that. And then finally, safeguard is to eliminate ignition sources. Anything that can significantly ignite an A2L, uh, needs to be mitigated or needs to be uh, out of the equation here. So there are a lot of work going on by system OEMs to make sure that there's no ignition sources uh, present in the systems. And when we talk about service technicians, uh, you know, their equipment and tools need to follow the same uh, principles. Uh, nothing that will serve as an ignition source. The, uh, the main thing to note now, I think, is recovery machines, making sure they are properly related, uh, properly rated uh, so that they can be used with A2Ls. So they, those uh, recovery machines are available uh, out on the market now, uh, but it's something you want to make sure uh, you tech, uh, check out. 
Finally, training and education, always a big uh, part of what we do uh, at Camores, but having our workforce, having the technicians out there, understanding what they can do, what they shouldn't do, what equipment to use, what are all the procedures, what stays the same and what changes. So in some of my future episodes, I'll be talking about some of those things. Uh, so again, make sure you subscribe so you get that information. So let's talk about uh, A2L refrigerant applications. And I think it's very informative to start with uh, mobile air conditioning, automotive AC, uh, because it was one of the first applications to move to an A2L refrigerant. And, and that movement was really uh, initiated by some environmental regulations over in Europe and what we call the EU MAC directive, the mobile AC directive, which set a line in the sand for refrigerants in automotive AC to be a GWP of less than 150. So where there were a few options there, things like HFC 152A, uh, CO2, obviously, uh, hydrocarbons, ammonia, and uh, an HFO 1234YF. So 1234YF looks a lot like 134A, but it obviously has a very low atmospheric lifetime and very low GWP, less than one GWP. So a number of industry organizations uh, took about uh, looking at how the industry could move to a mildly flammable refrigerant. Uh, there was a lot of risk analysis done, but uh, after a few years of research and a lot of study, the, uh, the uh, automotive industry really declared, you know, they could move forward with 1234YF in a safe and efficient manner. Uh, and that's how they moved because of its low environmental input combined with the fact that uh, it was similar enough to the old technology, uh, just had to be adapted for the mild flammability. So in the, in the eight, 10 years since that uh, work was undertaken, uh, 1234YF has just grown. Just about every uh, automotive uh, OEM in the world has uh, converted or is in the process of converting all their model lines to run on 1234YF as the uh, air conditioning fluid. So probably close to 100 million cars on the road uh, today. Uh, if you've bought a car in the last few years, there's a good possibility that it has 1234YF in it. But overall, a very successful uh, transition of an entire application uh, to an A2L refrigerant. So let's talk a little bit about uh, commercial refrigeration. So there, again, we've seen a little bit of adoption of A3 flammabilities, but those are uh, severely limited in charge size. And the uh, highly flammable nature of those will always limit them to some extent. Um, but if we start looking at uh, other types of systems, where can and will A2L start showing up first? Again, I want to point out there's a lot of A1 systems out there, things on 22, 404, 507, that will probably need to be converted to keep up with some of the new environmental regulations if they're not going to be retired in a reasonable amount of time. But again, those can only be replaced by non-flammable, same safety class A1 refrigerants like 449. 513 dependent on the system. Um, so while today new systems are coming out with those same refrigerants, 449, 513, uh, as we get out in the later years, uh, Kigali phase down and those type of quota systems, there will be a desire and a, a need to move to even lower GWP, which probably means A2L flammable refrigerants. So you can think uh, self-contained cases. Uh, a lot of those can be designed on A2L pretty easily. And then even some distributed systems. Uh, I'm going to throw a link down in the bottom here uh, to show you a, a case uh, study that we were involved with uh, over in Europe, actually putting an A2L in a, a cold storage uh, system. And uh, those can be done. It, uh, you know, you have to do the risk analysis and you have to understand the occupancy of the uh, space, uh, the size of the charge, uh, a lot of uh, steps you have to go through to assure that it's done safely. But those can and have uh, been done, and we expect those type of applications to uh, continue to grow as well in the future. And finally, I guess maybe the biggest one is the uh, air conditioning, uh, particularly as it relates to split systems or residential, light commercial uh, designs. We have a lot of here in the U.S. Uh, that have typically been uh, R22 and then for the last 10, 15 years, uh, 410A. So where are those going to transition and when? Uh, some of the regulations have the GWPs of those systems needing to be less than uh, 750, which means you're probably going to be uh, looking at an A2L flammable refrigerant, something like R54B, uh, which is getting a lot of traction. And, uh, and R32 is also being looked at. 
So uh, 454B is one uh, I'm pretty bullish on. A, a lot of uh, the OEMs have kind of gotten behind that and announced that that is their uh, product going forward, their fluid going forward for a lot of their systems. Uh, it does have some advantages over R32 in terms of being closer to the design basis when you look at uh, uh, oil issues or discharge temperature. Um, and it also has a lower GWP than uh, R32. So in outer years, those small, relatively small differences in GWP may be important as we, we go uh, into the later years of the Kigali uh, phase down. Uh, coming along with that, obviously, as I mentioned before, the codes and the safety standards all have to be developed and published and then adopted uh, to tell us, you know, the types of systems, the places and spaces where these type of air conditioners can be installed. And then obviously the whole industry service side is starting the process and there's a lot of great work going on. But if you haven't caught up with it, I encourage you to look around uh, for some training on A2L, specifically around safety, handling, charging, recovery, service. Uh, there's a number of organizations doing that work as well as Comores. So um, let me just wrap up this A2L discussion around applications by a few uh, principles. Again, we're only going to be using flammable refrigerants in equipment that is designed for flammable refrigerants. We don't want to see A2Ls going into A1s. That can't happen. And uh, we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. And again, in order to do it safely, it has to be in compliance with the safety standards. There's a lot of very smart people doing a lot of work on the standards and the codes. And again, we need to do that so our workforce can be trained in the installation, which is going to be very important, and the tools, the working conditions, the equipment, everything they're going to be needed to use to do their jobs, uh, we're going to have to come up to speed on. So I hope that gave you some insight on the applications, where A2Ls are emerging, where they've been for a little while, and where we see them coming. Uh, again, as part of this mini series on anatomy of an A2Ls, so we're going to do another video, a little bit deeper dive on some of the other flammability properties in addition to burning velocity. So you can see things like minimum ignition energy, uh, how these things uh, burn or ignite, and some of the differences you'll see between a, a class three and a class one. Uh, and again, standards and codes work. And then uh, we'll be sharing with you a bunch of uh, safety handling uh, training information so you can make sure you your workers, your business, and your customers are all very comfortable moving forward safely with A2L refrigerants. Uh, thanks for uh, checking out this uh, episode. Again, if anything pops up in your mind you want me to comment on or get you some information on, please feel free to reach out and uh, look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.